More element tonight, as Tom mentioned, right-wing author Jerome Corsi, who was walked away from, who walked away from, he rejected a plea deal, faced a potentially imminent indictment for lying to prosecutors as well about his own involvement with Assange and WikiLeaks. Well, today, of course, he provided NBC News itself with draft documents from the special counsel's office that summarize at least some of the evidence that Mueller has gathered against him, Jerome Corsi. The documents state that former Trump advisor Roger Stone told Corsi in a July 2016 email to, quote, get to Assange at Ecuadoria embassy in London and get the pending WikiLeaks emails. What more do you want? According to NBC News, of course, he said he declined the request to make clear to Stone that an attempt to contact WikiLeaks could put them in investigators' crosshairs, according to the draft court documents. But Mueller's team said that was a lie. Look, I'm going to start with Betsy, Yamish, all of you. I've known Roger Stone a long time. What he specializes in is the dark arts. He gets stuff on you that you don't believe he has any way of getting it. He's really good at it. Here he is in this whole question with his friend, Jerome Corsi. And you've got uh, Manafort. All these guys, he was a business partner, was Black Manafort and Stone for years here in Washington. All this connected with what guys who are really good at digging up dirt. And then we find out they're dealing with, with Assange and WikiLeaks and the Russians ultimately. And all this got to us as voters and as commentators, as news reporters, during the campaign, we were hearing about Podesta. We were hearing about, you know, Palmieri's commentaries and little notes and embarrassments and stuff. Why are we hearing about it? Why was it making Hillary's campaign look bad? Because these guys were all involved with doing it. And let's remember, Betsy, this is we're getting to the belly of the beast here, I think. Podesta's emails didn't just come out during the campaign. They came out a mere few hours after the Access Hollywood tape that caught Donald Trump on camera talking about allegedly sexually assaulting women was released. Not alleged, claiming, claiming, claiming to. Exactly, could yeah. do it. Yeah. Right, exactly. Commenting More about, about that it. at the end of the show, by the way. Boasting yeah. about it. Uh, and, and the timing of those WikiLeaks emails could not have been more helpful for the Trump campaign. It was like as soon as that tape dropped, somebody in WikiLeaks knew that this bombshell, this collection of bombshells or, or bomblets that they were sitting on, needed to get injected into the American okay. news ecosystem. And, and just to remind everybody and myself, Trump was not winning this campaign through the summer. It looked like really close to, in fact, it looked like till election night that Hillary's going to win. So he needed a long ball, a Hail Mary pass. He needed some really good dirt. Well, what's and it looks like he got some. Well, what's telling about some of these emails that we're talking about is there's literally, and I'm gonna, I want to read it because it's one shortly timed for after I come back and one timed for October 2nd plan to be very damaging. So it's not even that we don't have to really ask whether or not they were doing this because they wanted to have the timing. It's literally in the email that Robert Mueller has. It's a red flag that says, hey, this is when we're going to drop this. We're going to do this right now. And we're going to make sure that Hillary looks weak and we're going to try to hurt her campaign. And you have someone who's now tied to Donald Trump sending these emails and, yeah. and knowing about this. And I mean, as a reporter, I remember going through these WikiLeaks dumps and, and reading all this stuff and thinking, wow, now they're really going to be in trouble because we did learn so much stuff. Some of this stuff was normal political banter, but it looked so bad yeah. because we only got it from the Hillary Clinton side. You know, uh, this is like Wheel of Fortune. We're looking at this big, big wall. We're trying to figure out the sentence and we're seeing different letters in it. And we're seeing, you know, we're seeing Assange visit from, you know, probably according to The Guardian with a meeting with them, Manafort. And we're hearing about Corsi having conversations with Roger Stone about how they get this stuff. But they all knew ahead of time about what the Russian dump was going to look like. The second dump from our friend at the embassy, whatever, yeah. the way they talked in dark arts. Uh, we are getting a picture here that's starting to fill out. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's. We so the question to you. Yeah. Question of the hour. Let's hear it. That's why we got it already. Oh, he's totally got it already. This isn't Wheel of Fortune. This is Wheel of Guys Who Can't Get Their Story Straight. And this is... Ah, no, this is the kind just of, a rage. It's but no, but no, but this is, <laughs> this is the kinds of emails and the kinds of evidence that makes prosecutors salivate when they see guys talking about their friend in the embassy and literally, as you mentioned... Talking said, in that language. Talking in that language and talking about the day on which they're going to make an email dump. And so certainly Mueller has that, but he's also got other evidence to corroborate it, too. So, you know, last time I was on, I was sort of, I don't know... It, it, I don't, I don't know how far this is going to go. This is getting more and more obvious as to how clear what the evidence has. And, and, and I love the way they say, you know, I figured it out. Like, you know, I, uh, Dunninger, one of those guys that can predict the future and figure out what you got in your pocket. Anyway, according to the documents that Corsi, Jerome Corsi, provided to NBC News today, the special counsel can show that Corsi wrote Stone in early August predicting what Leaky Wicks would do next. Referring to Rassange, Corsi wrote, 
Word is friend and embassy plans two more dumps, one shortly after I'm back, second in October. Impact planned to be very damaging. What more do you want? The email suggests, of course, he was familiar with the timing and the content of the Russian hacked emails that Assange would eventually release. They knew it all ahead of time. Guess how? However, here's how, of course, he'd explain to NBC News how he came to have advanced knowledge of Assange, Assange's plan. It was speculation. It was deduction. I just happened to be right. I said to myself, if I had these emails, I'd use them as the October surprise. And why did I think they were going to come out serially, drip, drip by drip? Because Assange is very strategic. He understands the news cycle. And he had some 50,000 emails. The Oracle of Delphi. He sees the future. Uh, t Tom, what do you make of this uh, produ uh, defense based upon my ability to tell the future? Because I have that ability. So, Chris, I, I saved all of my emails from all of these various leaks as they came out from that summer in 2016. And in going back and looking at those today, I remember we were all surprised. The fact that the DNC was hacked, and then eventually we saw that information, we knew the DNC was hacked because of their own disclosures ahead of that information being uh, becoming public in July of, uh, of 2016. What we did not know, what nobody knew, was that John Podesta was hacked at that point. Now, maybe U.S. intelligence maybe U.S. government knew at that time, but publicly, yes. none of us knew that, Chris. So for them to all of a sudden just come out and say, well, Podesta uh, is going to be the, the guy in the barrel, or to come out and say, he's the next one that's going to be next, who would have thought John Podesta was going to be the next person that was going to come up? <laughs> Another thing that I want to point out, Chris, is that they were talking a lot in these emails, and you've, you've talked about one on, on screen, Yamish referred to one earlier. In these, in these exchanges that we see in these court documents, they talk about how bad it's going to be for the foundation. And some people are trying to say, well, you know, clearly they didn't really know it was Podesta because they're talking about the foundation. Not so fast. Going back and looking at those emails from John Podesta, he was the chairman of the Clinton Foundation at that point. And his wow. emails go back to 2008. And I remember going through and, and reading a lot of them. And, and one of the reasons why I read through them is because I thought that we would get some information on the foundation and get a little bit of a better understanding of it. So it's very possible that it was communicated to these guys, uh, whether it was by Assange or by somebody else saying, hey, we've got Podesta's emails. But remember, this is while he was chairman of the Clinton Foundation. There's going to be some stuff in there. And so I think that those are two really important things that we need to keep in mind as we go forward in the next couple of days and start to report this out. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.